I want to tell you my date story. Before I start telling you my date story, though, I have to give you a few pieces of information about who I was when this happened. This happened about eight or nine years ago. So right now, I'm 36. At the time, I was 28, 27, in that range. Uh, right now, I weigh about 255 to 260 pounds. At the time of the story, I was well over 300 pounds. Well over 300 pounds. And that's going to be a little bit important, I think, to the story. At the time, uh, I had only had one girlfriend. We dated about three months. I broke up with her. And I hadn't really been on any other dates outside of that. At the time, <clears throat> I worked in downtown Montreal in uh, the Sun Life building. And right across the street from the Sun Life building, there was Placeville Marie. Plaza Ville Marie is still there, although today it's undergoing a bunch of construction and you can't really do much in there. But at the time, there was a Dunkin' Donuts in the food court that you could go to. And I started on my breaks going to the food court, to the Dunkin' Donuts in the morning, every day. And I would get uh, a chocolate chip do uh, muffin, a chocolate chip muffin, and uh, milk. Regular milk, not chocolate milk, just regular milk. And at one point, uh, a girl started working at the Dunkin' Donuts. And I'm 5'11", well over 300 pounds at the time. And she was maybe 5 feet tall and very thin. Probably 90 pounds soaking wet. Like, Tiny, tiny individual, myself, large, large individual. And I would go to the Dunkin' Donuts and I would get the chocolate chip muffin and the milk. And sometimes friends would come with me. And this was a daily occurrence, Monday through Friday, every day. And I would just be having conversation with my friends, making jokes. And she would catch snippets of the conversations and would laugh at it. So I started bringing friends on purpose uh, just to make her laugh as well, to try and do that. And I guess it worked because as I would go, sometimes I would go by myself and uh, I would order the chocolate chip muffin and the milk. And even though there was behind her uh, a whole rack of chocolate chip muffins, she would be like, sorry, we don't have any. Teasing me. And of course, being the awkward, not able to converse with people, I would just be like, uh, uh, duh, I. And then she would, haha, just kidding, of course, here you go. Um, and then one time I wanted to steal a line from my friend, uh, Cody, who came up, well, I don't know if he came up with it, but he was the first person I heard say it. Uh, so I went up and I ordered a coconut donut. And you say it like that, and it's very funny to me. And uh, it was funny to her too, and she laughed. And she, uh, you know, and, I, and the milk. I got the milk, of course. And she asked me if I wanted a straw with the milk, which was weird to me, but I asked her um, if she would drink milk with a straw. She said yes, she would. And I said, all right, I'll take the straw and I'll, uh, I'll let you know how it goes. Her name is Allie, also. Uh, I found that out along the way, introducing myself at some point, saying, hey, I'm Jason. She goes, hey, I'm Allie. Uh, so the next week, uh, when I go back uh, and I encounter her, there's a line of people behind me uh, at the Dunkin' Donuts, but I don't care because I had a plan. I had an idea to go through with, and I did it. So I walk up to the counter, and I say, Ali, I need to tell you something very, very serious and important, and if you don't take it seriously, it will crush me. She looks at me and she goes, oh my god, what? And I tell her that the previous week I had drank milk with a straw on her recommendation, and it changed my life. 
And I went on a little bit of a rant talking about how colors are brighter. I used to be a very negative person, now I was positive. I had found an animal, nursed it back to health. All these amazing things that had happened to me because I drank milk through a straw. She's laughing the whole time, enjoying the story, and I tell her I want to make it up to her. She goes, oh, really? And I said, I want you to let me take you out to dinner. She said, yes. And we exchange numbers, and I call her, and uh, at the time, it don't, I don't think they exist anymore at all, but uh, I selected Boca Chino's as a restaurant chain, uh, and I told her that uh, they were popular enough that there were people in there, and they were well lit. So she should feel safe, which she also enjoyed. She said yes, and we went out. Uh, and uh, had some pretty good conversation and then the bill came and I said I wanted to pay and she said why and I told her because I wanted to pay her back and she said she I didn't know what kind of person she was and that maybe she was crazy and that she didn't deserve to have something nice done for her and I told her, you don't seem crazy, and I just wanted to do something nice for her. At which point she said she wasn't interested in having a boyfriend. At which point, at that point of the date, I did not want or suggest that I wanted to be her boyfriend, but she made it very clear she didn't want one. And I said, that's okay, I'd still like to pay for dinner. Uh, and she said to allow her to at least pay the tip, which I conceded in. At that point, the date uh, became a little awkward. Uh, there wasn't a lot of good conversation. Um, I didn't drive, and I still don't, but at the time I didn't drive as well. So uh, we took a bus together to the nearest uh, subway station and parted. And because I'm an awkward, weird guy, I did not uh, maybe pick up on some cues, but still didn't want to be a boyfriend, just wanted to have a friend. You know, I got along well enough with her. So I called her, and it went to voicemail, or maybe an answering machine at the time. And uh, I said, hey Ali, it's Jason. I had a pretty good time, you know, just want to hang out. Don't, you know, it doesn't have to be anything, just we can hang out, so let's hang out. Left the message. And she never called me back. Which is, you know, understandable, I suppose. Now, here's uh, at least my favorite part of the story is that uh, as a 5 foot 11, well over 300 pound man, I have now become deathly afraid of encountering this five foot tall, less than 100 pound woman. I don't want to run into her. I don't want to accidentally have to talk to her. I am scared of her. So I stopped going to Dunkin' Donuts every day for my break. Uh, at this point, I got transferred to work uh, at a company within Plasville Marie um, Electronic Arts. And they, uh, you know, so I was just doing everything I could to avoid the food courts to not run into her. And my friends would be like, Jay, let's go eat at lunch. And I was like, can't go to the food court. And they're like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, I can't go to the food court. And my friends would start getting mad at me. But this was the reality I chose to live. So if you know anything about Place Ville-Marie, and if you don't, here's a description. There are several ways to get into it. And I was going to work one morning. And there is a next to an entrance to um, a parking lot, an underground parking lot, there are two large columns and some glass doors. So I'm walking into the glass doors to enter the building and uh, she wasn't hiding. She had just positioned herself, Ali had positioned herself behind one of the columns so I couldn't see her. But as I'm approaching the door, she's behind one of the columns, smoking. So, 
I see her behind the columns, and being the guy I am, uh, I give a flash to guns like this, because I'm a fool, and she's smoking, looking at me, and I trip on the sidewalk and face plant into the glass doors. So I turn from face planting in the glass doors to look at her, and she's just there smoking, like, uh, and I look at her and I go, now that's fucked up. And I open the glass door, and I enter. And that was the last time I ever saw Allie. Um, she was no longer working at the Dunkin' Donuts after that. Never saw her around anymore. And that's a little bit more than my date story.